Okay, so welcome to lecture three of these four algebraic geometry lectures and the game is uh, we're going to do push forwards uh, of sheaves of modules and so the first thing we need to do is import sheaves of modules uh, of modules uh, dot defs, I think that was what it was called, was it? Yes, there's defs. Uh, so that's a thing, and that's compiling. Okay, great. Uh, and then we should probably do this. Uh, push forward uh, of sheets of modules uh, on a ring space. So there we go. Uh, and where are we going to start? So I guess we're going to do variables uh, x and y. Uh, are going to have type ring space. Uh, and that's a category, so that's why it's in capital letters. Uh, and then we are going to have uh, a function. Oh, do you know what? Normally, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so let's do an experiment. Okay, names, so section, experiment. Uh, so let's have f from x to y, hom y. So that's not, that's not the usual slash two arrow, that's the category theory arrow. Uh, and experiment. And now have I got no errors? Uh, How are things? Oh, it's. Why is that taking so long? Do I need to come? Let me just compile. Uh, projects. Sheaves of. What's it called? TCC. Uh, lean project. Oh, lean minus minus. I'm just compiling on the command line. Just bear with me. Uh, SRC. Sheaves of modules. Uh, push forward. Uh, do you hear those annoying pings when I... <laughs> uh, great. So let me just switch that on to nothing. Uh, I've, I, sheaves, sheaves of modules dot defs has not been compiled. So there we go. That's fine. Visible files. Now it should be quicker. Uh, and pullback we're never going to get to. Now I'm hoping that is orange bars will disappear. There we go. Uh, so now the question is... Uh, so it's going to be called, what's it going to be called? Uh, namespace, uh, ringed space, I guess. And I'm going to define what should probably be called, oh no, maybe it's sheaves of, maybe it should live in sheaves of modules. Uh, sheaf of modules. Is that what it was called? Uh, oh, let's just have a check. Let's do m uh, I think it was called sheaf of modules on x yeah that's compiled great so namespace sheaf of modules so let's just try and write down the definition uh, and it should be called def map right uh, def map so this is uh, that'll have x and y ring space and we'll have f from x hom y, and then we'll have m, a sheaf of modules on x, and we want to make a sheaf of modules on y, colon equals underscore. And then let's generate a skeleton, so there we go. Uh, so ab sheaf, uh, this this is there already, right? Should be there already, because there should already be some code to push forward uh, an abelian. This is a sheaf of abelian groups, right? This is M is the sheaf of abelian groups on X, and we need a sheaf of abelian groups on Y. Uh, so let's have a look. Let's search for push forward, and that's my repo. Uh, so that's. Is there nothing there? Oh, let's also search in MathLib. Here we are. This looks better. Oh, but now we've got far too much. Uh, okay. Uh, let's let's try searching for pre-sheaf. Let's try searching for sheaf dot start push forward. Oh, bingo. So here it is. So here's the 
gamma specker junction file in Mathlib. This is the proof that uh, this is the this is the proof that the functor sending an affine scheme to a scheme, sorry, sending a ring to a scheme, spec sending a ring to a scheme, and gamma sending a scheme to a ring that these functors are adjoint. And apparently they do top sheaf push forward. So this is what we need: top dot sheaf dot push forward. This seems to be a functor. Uh, <coughs> ah, this is a functor right. Okay, so it's going to be. It's going to be top dot sheaf dot push forward uh, something something something. So what does top dot sheaf dot push forward want? It wants a map from x to y, but x and y are topological spaces. So I think uh, uh, yeah, there's a coercion. Uh, if x is a ringed space, then lean will automatically coerce x into a topological space. You see, it puts a little up arrow there. So there's no problem getting a ringed, getting a topological space from a ring space. But what I'm worried about uh, is f. Right? f should go from on y colon top. Is there a coercion there? And there is not. You see, so. So, okay, so here's our first puzzle. Uh, so, first puzzle, uh, first problem. Uh, given a morphism of ring spaces, uh, how to get the corresponding uh, morphism of the underlying topological spaces? Because you see, a morphism of ring spaces is two things, right? It's the morphism of topological spaces and it's some morphism. Uh, and it's some morphism of the sheaf. A ring space is a space equipped with a sheaf. Uh, <coughs> so, how are we going to do that? So, let's just do example uh, x colon top, x top uh, to y top, uh, colon equals begin, end. Do I have an f in here? Wonderful. Let's, uh, let's include f. Uh, So now let's have a so let's now let's investigate how this f is made, right? I wanted to basically do cases. I could try to do cases f. Uh, oh, cases r. Ah, cases f has worked really well. Uh, cases f has told us that however f is implemented, uh, it's got two. It's made up of f dot base and f dot c. So let's have a let's have a look and see what these things are. Uh, let's let foo uh, be f dot c. And let's let bar, uh, let's let bar be f dot base. Oh, bat. Hard luck. Uh, you ah, uh, what's this? Yeah, oh, there we go. This is top. So it's there. That's it. It's it's. We've answered the question. It's f dot base. Uh, it's f dot base. So it's, let's try f dot base. Yeah, that's that's worked. Okay. How do you get the Morphism of the underlying topological space is f dot base. Uh, so exact f dot base, right? There we go. Uh, so top dot sheaf dot push forward. It now wants to eat a morphism of topological spaces, so that's going to be called f dot base. There, and now it's complaining that right now this is a functor uh, from. Uh, yeah, it's difficult to work out what it is. Uh, let's put. An, it's, this is well. Anyway, it's a functor. Uh, what would it be? Oh, I could just hover. Let's just read the. Oh, there we go. The push forward functor. So this. Right, I see. So a functor. A functor will be a map on objects and a map of... I see, I see. We've got M. Remember, we've got M is a sheaf of modules. So M dot ab sheaf is the sheaf of abelian groups. So what I want, what I want, really want to do is this. Uh, M dot ab sheaf. But now it's going to complain. Yeah, the, the, the problem is this is a functor and not a function. Uh, and I want to take that functor and then maybe put obj here. Oh, that's worked. 
Okay, first success of the stream uh, is that we've matched, we've managed to push forward uh, the abelian sheaf. And so now uh, we need the module structure. So this is still this is this is a theorem, right? This this is a this is some theorem that a whole bunch of data is compatible. I think that's that's the theorem that if you restrict, I mean somehow the restriction computes with ring. Yeah, restriction is a ring homomorphism. That's what this thing here is. But first, or a module homomorphism. But first, we need to make the module structure. So this is a lambda u. Uh, let u be an open subset of y. And the question is, how do we make right? So we've one thing I really have not understood yet is how to make all of this stuff less of a mess, right? So that should be a ring, and that should be a module. So this should be a ring, uh, and this should be a module. Uh, well, this we, we want this to be a module, so this should be. Uh, an abelian group. So that's the question. Uh, and I suppose we could just go begin. And we could just uh, let's just go to tactic mode. I mean, we're not going to be in tactic mode at the end of this. Uh, right. So why is that a ring? Well, that is obviously a ring because that's just O X Y, right? That's uh, indeed. It's uh, O, it's O X. Um, I mean, it's O Y of U, right? That's what a mathematician would call it. Uh, did that? Did we get that working? Um, uh, let's do let R colon equals O underscore Y. Is this a thing? U. Yeah. So that's good. Uh, oh, it's got type combring. So. Uh, instance com ring R. Uh, oh, I'm not in um, uh, let whatever colon com ring R colon equals um, infer instance. Is that a thing? Okay, great. So, so Lean certainly knows that I, I, uh, so there we go. Lean certainly knows that O of Y, O Y U is a ring. And is this, let me just change uh, module, this thing here, uh, O Y U something. Does that work? Yeah. Okay, so Lean certainly knows, Lean certainly knows that this is a ring, indeed it's O Y of U. And, uh, <coughs> And now what the heck is this abelian group that needs to be a module for this ring? It is this thing here. What's this mess here? First of all, it's a coercion to sort. Okay. Uh, but there we go. There are. Ah, so this is right. So this is certainly an abelian group because this is an object of the category ab. Uh, and that coercion there means turn it from an object. The objects of categories are terms, right? They're terms of types. Uh, whereas module is expecting a type, so that little up arrow there means turn it from a term into a type. Uh, so now what? Uh, we get well. We're gonna have to give. We're gonna have to give it the module structure. I guess we should. Ah, so now I was gonna switch. Ah, let's see if I can make this work. Uh, Actually, I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause recording for a second while I do some fiddling. Right. So after that little uh, uh, intervention, anyway, we've got f from x to y, and uh, we've got m. Uh, this is on x, and we are trying to. So f f lower star of m. Uh, this is on y, and I'll remind you of the definition that f lower star of m, this is a sheaf, and so what happens when I evaluate it at v, so if, if v lives in y is open, uh, then f lower star m of y is just, def is f lower star m of v is just defined to be m of f inverse of v. So this is why, this is why push forwards are easier than pullbacks. Because uh, if I've got a sheaf on y and I need to get a sheaf on x, 
then uh, given some open subset of x, it would be nice to come up with an open subset of y, but there isn't some obvious one, so I'm going to have to take a limit. Uh, so I see, I see, I see. So m f inverse of v should already have an action of O x of f inverse of v, right? Uh, that that because m is a sheaf of modules on x, so m f inverse of v. So this is this should already have an action of this ring here, and we want an action of this ring here, uh, O y of v. And so if you've got one ring acting on a module and you want another ring to act on the module, then it suffices to give a morphism of rings, right? OK, so now let me uh, switch back to... Oh, why, is, why have I even got Teams open still? Go away. Uh, let me switch back to... What am I recording? I'm recording that, so let me do that. Uh, and now let me fiddle on Discord. That means I'm... Now let me... Ch -ch 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 change windows let's share uh, this again right so now hopefully we're back to lean so what do we need here uh, we need uh, we need the morphism uh, from oh I called it you hard luck we need the morphism let's I called it let me call them V because I just call them V there uh, we need the morphism of rings uh, from O, uh, X, X, F inverse of V uh, to O, Y of V. That's the plan. Uh, so where the heck is this coming from? Good question. Uh, that R, ah, that will be... We had F dot base. It's going to be F dot C, right? Uh, let foo, let foo be uh, f dot c. Let's see what f dot c is. Uh, foo is a map from, yeah, this is a morphism of, what's these objects? These are, this is a morphism of something. This is probably a morphism of pre-sheaves. And so it's probably a functor because a pre-sheaf, no, 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 I, I take that back. It's probably a natural transformation. Uh, because a pre-sheaf is a functor, and so a morphism of functors is a morphism... And a, yeah, yeah, a morphism of pre-sheaves is a morphism of functors, which is a natural transformation. Uh, and natural transformations, let me remind us all, uh, I think it's called na oh, what oh, category theory dot nat trans. Uh, let's just have a quick look at how natural transformations work. Yeah, there's an app and a natural naturality. So I think probably if foo is f dot c dot app, let's try that. Uh, and now foo says, if you give me, if you give me an open subset of that thing there, and I'm hoping that that's v. So let's try putting v here, and that has worked. So that's definitional equality for you, right? So and now that object. Right, should hopefully be, yeah, so is this, is this indeed, is this R to something? Uh, yeah, this is great. So the domain is R. Um, is that good? Yes, and the code, and the codomain, which is this thing here, uh, should also, should probably already have, right, so let's do that. Uh, so let's say, uh, let I uh, module this thing is the ring that we, that thing is the ring that's the target of this map foo. So this is just literally, this is F lower star. I mean, let me just say what I'm doing here. Uh, want uh, F lower star of M. Uh, evaluated at V uh, to be a module for F lower star of uh, O X right evaluated at V uh, and then we also and we also want uh, a morphism of rings uh, from 
uh, OX uh, F inverse of V uh, to wait a minute this is not da, 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 da. we want this to be sorry 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 we want this to be a module for uh, we want this to be a module for O Y of V and so we want a morphism of rings from O Y of V uh, O Y of V uh, to O X of F inverse of V and we also want uh, a that F lower star of M V is a module for O X of F inverse of V which is by definition remember F lower star uh, O X of V. Now put those in brackets. So that's the maths plan. Uh, so let's see if we can get. Where's my goal? I want this object here. I want. I want to, there. That object there. There. Colon equals infer instance. Right. If that works, I'm a Dutchman. Yeah. Exactly. These things never work. Uh, sorry? I. Green with let and for I, the beginning of a statement you meter space. Sorry, what are you saying? Have I made a mistake? Just a typo. Just a typo. Well, where's the typo? I think you need. Or what, what is let I? Is this oh, okay. Mind? I'll just do. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll do let if you like. Uh, let I means. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. The let I is a thing. Uh, okay. I'll come to, we'll come to what it does later because we're probably going to need it. So why is this not uh, I see, yeah I see we're mixing our metaphors right the, the, this is the, I see so here's, here's an issue right uh, uh, F lower star of let's say M uh, the push forward of M uh, on V equals M evaluated at F inverse of V, right? Okay, so this is this equality uh, will be definitional, uh, but it's not syntactic, right? Not syntactic. There. So t syntactic equality means literally it's the same character, like 2 add 2 equals 2 add 2. That's a syntactic equality. F lower star M of V equals F lower star M of V. Uh, so this is going to be definitional but not syntactic. And, uh, and the type class, the type class inference system uh, can't see through uh, definitional equalities. Uh, so we need to find out how to make this thing. Where is my... Let me just check that things are working, yeah. So where is my, where did I find this sheaf of modules? Here we are, module structure. Oh, did I, did I define it later? Yeah, there, so there's the thing there. It's m.modulestructure u. Uh, so let me try and blast through uh, the definitional equality. It's gonna be m.modulestructure something. I think that's worked, uh, even though I didn't say, yeah, I think that's worked. So uh, I'm quite surprised. I was expecting to now have to work out how to do F inverse of V. Can, if, oh, it must be, yeah, anyway, uh, that seems to have worked. So the, the thing about let I um, is that it doesn't just, define it it's uh, let me show you let me show you what the difference is let's 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 let that be that and now let's let that and now let's do it again uh, but this time I don't want to supply the proof I'm going to say uh, infer instance I'm going to say get the so that means get the get the get the square bracket system to do it right get the square bracket system uh, to find this instance that's what infer instances, and it doesn't work, you see, even though we just defined it here because we just we just made it. We even probably gave it a name. It probably ended up, yeah, it ended up being called this. There's several things which are being called this. 
but even though this that thing there that's that's what we want it's in our local context uh, but it's not in the type class inference system so the, the type the type this is looking through a big database uh, of instances and it can't find and it can't find this uh, because even though it's in our local context it's not in the big database and if I put capital I there then how it works so Peter, have I answered your question? Yeah. So that that let means define it and also uh, and also throw it into the type class inference system. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> and so now we know that this is already a module. And what are we trying to make? We're trying to make. Uh, and that's yeah, that's exactly the right thing on the. So now we need right. So what's left? Uh, so now this is. We're trying to make a module for the right ring, and currently we have a module for the wrong ring, okay? But there will be some way of... So mathematically now, uh, so mathematically, uh, what's left is this. Uh, firstly, we need a ring... Uh, uh, need, to, need to write down the ring homomorphism. Uh, ring homomorphism from... Uh, uh, OY of F inverse of V uh, to OX no OY of V it's going to be OY of V to OX OX of F inverse of V that's the first thing we need and secondly we need to find uh, uh, we need to find in MATLAB uh, the following thing we've got we have a ring homomorphism uh, from A to B, and then we've got a module. We get ring homomorphism from A to B and a module BM, uh, and I want to get from that a module AM. Uh, so okay. So the second question looks like the easier question. Uh, right. Let's do hash check module. <laughs> this might work. Uh, Here's the definition of module, and and now let's see if we're lucky. Uh, that's modules there. Da, 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 da. Oh, what? Ah, this looks interesting. Does it? No. This looks very interesting though. Module dot comp hom. Compose a module with a ring hom. So this is what we want. Uh, so it's going to be module dot comp hom something. Uh, let's go back to push forward. So let's do refine uh, module dot comp hom. Uh, how many things does module dot comp hom want to eat? It wants to eat a ring homomorphism. So let's try that. Oh, rotten luck. Oh, no, 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 it wants to eat... I must be wrong. Did I? Oh, it wants, oh, it wants M as well. It wants to eat two things. So there we go. Yeah, so that's compiled, which is good. And now what kind of mess have we left ourselves with? Uh, it wants a module for the second... Ah, oh, so we could name it. Uh, let's, let's call it uh, uh, modinst. Uh, and now we could put. Oh, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't want to. Yeah, it's just going to have to. We want the module. Let me copy the module. Here's the module. That's the module. It wants that first. Uh, so let's feed that in there. And now oh, we've still got four goals. And now we want to ring homomorphism. Let's just make the ring homomorphism. Any, any, it's working. <laughs> Uh, and that was it. oh we did this right we did it here it's it's um yeah yeah it's f dot c dot app v so why don't I just put that why don't I just put that there oh bingo goals accomplished so uh so the answer is it's this that is that is the actual so let me try. This probably won't work, right? Comma. 
Yeah, this doesn't work um, because Lean's type class inference system can't find this module thing. So we could do it's it was this thing here. That was what we needed. Uh, there. So we want to do lambda v uh, by let i colon that thing there uh, semicolon exact there. There we go. And I think now we can just comment all this stuff out. Uh, boom. Is it compiling? Uh, it doesn't, that doesn't look good. What's going on here? Oh, that does look good. It's just, I need to end, end sheaf of modules. Uh, right. I'll tell you what, I'll stop recording and then I'll see if anyone's got any questions. So that is our definition of the module structure. And now we're going to have to prove I might regret, I, I'll delete this at your, delete this at my peril. You should never delete stuff until it's all over. Uh, and so now we've got to prove, now this should be a theorem. Uh, let's click on this and see. Yeah, this is a prop, great. This is some statement that something is compatible with something. Uh, and who knows, who knows what that thing will be. Uh, so we've got to prove, aha. So let's do intros, intros V1 and V2. I think, let me, let me switch back to, uh, if I click uh, there, uh, oh, is everything broken now? Do I need to, Oh, fiddlesticks. I haven't got this hang, I haven't got the hang of screen mirroring yet, apparently. Uh, okay, all right, well, maybe I'm just not gonna do it. Uh, what this, this, uh, what we need to show here uh, is that the, uh, is that the module structure is compatible uh, with restriction, i.e. if R is in uh, o y of so which 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 one is r ah, i goes from v1 to v2 so if um so we could intros v1 and v2 and i as well so i is a morphism from v1 to v2 but v1 and v2 are in this opposite category this is this is the topological space attached to y and that's the promoting it to a type uh and so this is the category of open subsets of Y, but this op uh, means the opposite category. So I from V1 to V2 means that in the normal opens category, it's a map from V2 to V1. So, uh, so we have the hypothesis that V2 is a subset of V1. Uh, uh, so we need to prove that if R is in O, Y, V1, uh, and uh, M is in, I mean, this push forward, uh, M of where's that going to be again on V1 there then kind of the restriction of R dot M there that's going to be in uh, in F you see that we've defined that right that's the mo that's the thing we've just done the module structure uh, the restriction uh, of R M so where would that be R dot M is still in F star M of V1 so the restriction would be in V2 uh, equals, uh, and I should be able to do res of R above res of M, right? So that's, that's, that's the compatibility we need. Okay. Uh, and once we've proved that theorem, we've uh, defined the push forward. Uh, let's get rid of these notes because they're annoying. Uh, 
So what have we got here? Oh, we've got more. I oh, so we can do we could do intros R and M. So intros R and M. And now uh, we've got to prove this compatibility. Yeah. So this is all. Yeah, that's a very elaborate way of saying res, right? Because that that object there. That object there is f lower star m. And remember, f lower star m is a presheaf, and so it's a functor. And so we can, and that, so that val, yeah. Ah, oh, no, 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 sorry, that's a sheaf. Right, that's a, that is a, that is a sheaf. And then dot val sends the sheaf to the presheaf, and a presheaf is a functor, and a functor does something to objects and it does something to morphisms. And then this map I, yeah. So we're eating a morphism in some category and it's spitting out a morphism in some other category. It's spitting out a map from, that must say F lower star M of V1. Yeah, it says F lower star M of V1 to F lower star M of V2. So I think what's sort of problematic about algebraic geometry and lean at this point, I mean, one of the things which is problematic is that everything, I mean, I've got notation for this, right? I mean, I, I showed you what the goal was. This is the goal here, right? There. So why doesn't my goal look like that? Why does my goal look like a complete catastrophe? <coughs> okay, but okay, I'll stop whinging. Uh, how are we going to actually prove it? Uh, well, it's clearly going to be like have foo is going to be m dot compatibility bit, right? I should really not call it compatibility. It should be called m dot compatibility. Uh, so we have some we have some compatibility here, uh, and this wants to eat uh, open subsets of x, and it wants a map between those open subsets. So the open subsets of x that it wants to eat are they are pullbacks right it's going to be f it's going to be the pullback of v1 and the pullback of v2 uh, and do we know how to do that did we pre images right yeah pre images but this is going to be some functor right we've got the category of open subsets of y and the category of open subsets of x uh, and so this is going to be some functor uh, which we are going to have to find. Uh, uh, uh. Um, I'm just, I think I probably found it already. Here it is. It's topological space dot opens dot map. Uh, we can go back to the experiments if you like. Apparently, uh, uh, check topological space dot opens uh, dot map. Oh, small t. Yeah, that's the thing. So what does that do? Topological space dot opens dot map. Uh, so given a f given a aha. Uh -huh, so we need to give a morphism of topological spaces, and that's called f dot base. And now, and now this gives us a functor from, I think that that, I think that that is the pre-sheaf space, right? A pre-sheaf space is just a topological space equipped with a pre-sheaf of something. And I think that that arrow there, uh, I think that that arrow there will perhaps forget, I think that probably forgets the pre-sheaf my guess uh, we could um, we could do this and check right uh, let bands be this uh, so what does that do yeah that's a top exactly so this this thing here with without the arrow that's a yeah that's a y is a ring space y dot to pre-sheave space is a topological space equipped with a pre-sheaf of commutative rings, and then that arrow there is it's just the topological space. So 
And then this, is this a category? Yeah, this is the category of open subsets. Right, okay. And now this is the functor. And so we want to do, uh, if that's the functor, then we just want to know what it does on objects there. And now that is a function. Oh, ah, ha, ha. But we have a problem because uh, we actually don't want that because we need to, we need the, op, if I just, can I do op here, is that a thing? Yeah, 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 that's good. You see, this is, this. unfortunately, this is the functor from the opens to the opens, but what we want, what we actually have in our application uh, is we've got something in opens op, right? And why don't I just make this down here now? Like, uh, so that looks good. So this is a, so let's let func, let's let f be this. Yeah, you see, f is a functor, but it starts at y and ends at x, and I've got this op. So what happens if I do dot op? <coughs> Excellent. Okay, I should really... Uh, Uh, and so now we should be able to feed. We should be able to feed stuff into this. So that looks handy. Now let's see if we can feed in. Let's see if we can feed in v1. Uh, let u1 uh, be f dot obj of v1. Let's try that. Uh, I want to cough for a little bit, so I think I'm going to pause the. Uh, so you did that work? Yeah, you is in the right. You one is in the right place. And let's let v. Let's let u two uh, be f dot obj uh, v two. Uh, and while we've got this functor here, we had a map from. We've got i from v one to v two. So let's let j, uh, and that would be f dot map i probably. Great. Yeah. So there is the map. Uh, I could even say this is a map from u one. Uh, to u2. Uh, okay, so there's lots of things. And ah, foo. Let's get back to foo. Foo is our theorem. Uh, but our theorem wants to eat u and v and i. So let's feed it u1 and u2 and j. Uh, and so now foo says. That for every element of, so now foo says what? Uh, foo says uh, that for all uh, x dot to pre sheaf space dot pre sheaf dot obj u1. That's just for all, uh, for all r, for all r in, uh, in uh, o x of u1, comma, uh, and for all m in, and for all m in, uh, in m of u1, there, it says that, it says that res o r, hmm, let's call these s's, let's call this s, and let's call that n, and let's call this s, and let's call this n, and let's call that S, and let's call that N. And now let's just do, uh, for all R and M, for all R in this, and for all M in this, uh, it says that res of R bub M uh, is res of R bub res of M. Uh, so that's what we have, and that's what clearly what we're gonna have to use uh, and so what will R be? R is in OX of U1. So R will be in OX of U1. And that's by definition. Oops. And that's by definition. Uh, OX of F dobj V1. So that will be F inverse of V1. 
there, and that is f lower star of O x uh, of V1. So foo wants something in f lower star O x of V1. Do we have something to hand? <laughs> what have we got? We've got R. R, R is in O y of V1. Uh, oh, that's not called R. Why is it called R? Oh, I'm just going to rename these S and N. Uh, so that's good because we can make one of those things. We made it up here, didn't we? Uh, we use module dot com pom is f dot. That was the ring homomorphism there f dot c dot app something so let's try that uh, let's let r be f dot c dot app uh, of presumably v1 or possibly u1 and now let's see what r is r is a ring homomorphism but now hopefully is r is s in there s is in there so let's put s here bingo so now R is, uh, so let's let, uh, let's apply foo uh, with R, with R equals, you know, R equals S as it were. Or oh, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, I mean with R equal to the image of S under the map. See, I want to keep track of where everything is. Uh, yeah, under the map from O, oh, because I can't, I can't read, I can't read the output. Under the map from O Y V one to F lower star O X of V one. There, uh, V one, which equals uh, O X of F inverse of V one. I just want to keep, I want to keep track of the um, mathematics. So let's let R be that, and then let's let foo be that. Uh, and now ho hopefully foo is not too far from, so now foo wants to eat an M. Uh, so foo wants to eat an M. So foo now wants, now wants to eat, uh, and where does it want an M, uh, M in, M of U1, uh, which is M of what's U1? So U1 is F inverse of V1 there. And U2 uh, equals F inverse of V2 there. So this is M of F inverse of V1. And so that is, that is F lower star of M uh, evaluated at V1. And, and that's exactly what N is, right? N is in, so these are definitionally equal, so I'm gonna just feed in N, let's go nuts. Did that work? It did work. Okay, great. So our goal is very closely related to foo. Uh, and so of course we could just try exact foo. I don't think this is gonna work. Hard luck. It doesn't work. Uh, we could try even convert foo. And that's gone horribly wrong. Let's not try that. Uh, okay. So now foo says, uh, foo now says, uh, says, it says res of, it says res of r dot, I mean m and n turned out to be the same, didn't they? So I could change that n to an m, and I'll change this to an m, and I'll change that to an m. The, the issue is that r and s are not the same. Uh, there, and then it says, so it's done that now. Uh, right, so we've got that. Let's apply with foo and uh, and 
and with uh, m equals m, as it were. Uh, and the reason it works is that. So now what do we have to do? You see, now this just looks terrifying as far as I can see. What? Uh, because that, that should be the same as Oh, yeah. So what does the goal say? I'm going to have to... So Fu now says this. Uh, Fu says... Uh, Fu says this thing here. Uh, so what have we got? We've got R in OX of U1 and M in M of U1. This is as elements of uh, M of U2. There. And the goal, yeah, the goal is about, rather annoyingly, if I click on this, uh, the goal says that something is equal to something and the things, and it's that thing and that thing, but the things which are equal are equal, they are objects of that there. But those are just definitely the same, okay. The goal, the goal says that two, elements of f lower star m of v2 uh, are equal. And so we're going to have to, oh, but we must be so close. Uh, let me look at my cheat sheet. Uh, Oh, did I use that? No. Let J be that. Yeah, I've done that. Oh, when I was cheating, I did get the converter. Let me see if I can get this convert to work. Convert foo timed out. But if I do convert foo using one. Yeah, there we go. That's worked. Has it done anything? So the, the idea is that the morally... Uh, you know, morally, morally, foo should be the answer, uh, but apparently, Lean can't see that foo is the answer. So what does what does convert? So foo says that something equals something, and the goal says that something equals something, and you can kind of see that foo and the goal are not the same, like because that's that's about there's a j involved and an r dot m, and here there's an i involved and an s dot m. Uh, and I do kind of suspect that these are equal, but they might not be equal by definition. Uh, and then this goal here. So you see, but that thing there, that last module thing, that I think that is equal to that by definition. So what, let's see what convert foo has done. Yeah, it's um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These things are. These things are. Yeah, so now it, I think that that should morally be equal to that, and that should morally be equal to that. But, yeah, these are both in F lowers. I see, I see. Do I see? Yeah, we're somehow, we're, yeah, definitional equality is kind of confused at this point. Uh, right, lovely. And so now the question is, uh, so now we've used foo, so now we must be nearly there. So now we need to use something else. That's the question. We, we, can, we can clear foo now. Uh, and what was foo? Foo was compatibility. So now I need to, I need to think of something else to use. Uh, and looking at my cheat sheet, I used, oh, I don't do anything there. It's all, I used naturality. Apparently I haven't used naturality. Uh, according to my, according to my notes here,
according to my notes here, I ah, you see, I don't even need to define. Look, I can just do this, right? There's no, there's no need to define foo at all. There we go. Now there's no foo. Oh, but now my notes are wrong. So let's put that in there. Uh, according to my notes, I now need to use. Uh, I now need to use naturality. So we haven't used this apparently. Uh, so let's have have foo primed is f dot c dot naturality. Uh, I need to use the naturality of some of this natural transformation. And so foo primed it wants to eat two open sets and then it wants to eat a morphism. Uh, and these are open sets in y and so it needs to eat a morphism between objects of y and that is going to be i. There. Aha, so now this says, right, this says that this is presumably a functor now. Oh, that, no, sorry, this is not, a, this is a morphism. And this is composition of morphisms, is it? Uh, looks like it. So the composition of those two morphisms equals the composition of those two morphisms. Uh, Ah, and indeed you can see uh, yes. So these are morphisms. You see, for example, this is the map from this is the map from O Y of V one to F lower star O X. These are two maps from O Y of V one to F lower star O X of V two. And, okay, so according to my earlier notes, apparently we're going to need these. So what's the problem? Uh, S. So we can yeah, go on. With R. Like, like R is defined as this. R is defined to be that, yes. So R is F, C, at V. So this thing here, X depreciate, da, 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 map. J and then this is yeah yeah and then f dot c dot app v one s is that there there it is aha and that thing there is going to be equal to that thing there right so this this thing here is equal to the right hand side of this thing when we evaluate it at s so, so I would just the definition of R and then substitute the naturality somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But this is an equality of two. So we need to we need to use x if or something, right? So we need to rewrite fun like this will be fun like dot x if at foo primed. And now you see this says for all inputs, this map applied to this input is this map applied to this input. Uh, and the input we want to give it is s, I think. As a specialized uh, uh, foo foo primed s, will that work? Yes, great. And so now, you see, I'm ho I'm hoping that this. I suppose we can't rewrite it. I suppose. Let's just try. This will never work. Uh, rewrite foo primed. No, rewrite foo primed the other way. No, hard luck. Uh, maybe we can. Uh, maybe we can do some tricks. Actually, maybe we could get this to work. Um, you just, you just simp, but like a full bar thing, so that it. Uh, oh, simp at foo prime. Let's see what that does. Like I would it's, just like it to. It's write done. So ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's gone too far. Uh, Let's see what it used to do to do that exciting thing. Uh, oh, at at foo primed. Oh, oh, add a, and why not? Let's let's try zooming it everywhere. Yeah, it's it's it's. <laughs> What does that do to the... I didn't mean to apply it to the goal. Uh, but did it actually do anything useful? What was the goal before? 
And that's after the specialising. No, the goal is unchanged. It's it's done some it's done some internal fiddling. Foo primed. I it's uh, at foo primed. So this turns it to true. Yeah, we don't. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I, know, I see. It. <laughs> this is the problem. It knows naturality. Aha. <laughs> let's let's remove that. There we go. And now. Now we can use the definition of R. Now, now it has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, FC app v1. Oh, we've got some stupid unop op. Let's go. Uh, I will just rewrite the definition of R inside foobar, basically. Oh, why does that? Why did that happen? Oh, the comma. So in Fuba we now have this f dot c dot f dot v one of s and this this is r. So yeah, yeah, but I think that Lean will know that. Uh, and so I'm just trying to get this to. This is just not i. I want that to be i. <laughs> okay. uh, oh, and it might be ah, it might ah, ah, ha, ha, it might be the definition. Let's try it. Let's let's rewrite left foo primed. If this works, then <laughs> right. So so it did. It's done it. So what's going on? You're you're absolutely right. Uh, we kind of we want to sort of rewrite R and turn it into F C that thing there. But because I defined R with let, right? I defined R with let here, and so actually lean somehow the rewriting is already happening. Uh, and and yeah, it's I didn't I didn't need so normally a rewrite wouldn't work right normally, normally this thing here is supposed to be syntactically this thing here, uh, but it doesn't look like it is. But I think somehow lean that R is being unfolded automatically before the rewrite happens. So the rewrite has succeeded. Uh, and so now what? Is this refl yet? Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, so there we go. There's the proof. <laughs> We've done it. More, in some sense, more by luck than judgment. Uh, let me put that there. There, at foo. Uh, why is all the spacing messed up? What have I done? There we go. That looks better. Oh, the spacing is no longer messed up. Uh, so that proof is kind of a mess. I suppose we could kind of we could now try to golf it. That's what people do. If I do, if I remove that simp only, does the rewrite? Yeah, the rewrite breaks. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how to golf this. I mean, I suppose we could sort of. We could we could now we could sort of cut. We could cover our tracks, right? <laughs> by, uh, by not defining R at all. Uh, uh, and did we ever use J? We never use J. There we go. Oh, we've got an error. How come? Did mm -hmm. I have an error before? Yes. Apparently, I did use J. In the convert command method J. Ah, oh, thank you. So that's f dot map i there, and now J isn't used either. Any U's? Oh, there's a U. Uh, so that could be this. So if you see, if this was going into, if this was going into um, Mathlib. You see, this is this is the antithesis of what I want to do. So I could try and make the proof smaller, right? Uh, but why do I want to actually do that? I think this proof is fine. Uh, so we've defined 
push forwards of sheaves of modules. And now uh, we should probably prove some uh, lemmas about these things. And I'm slightly scared about this because when I tried to do this in practice, I couldn't do it. Uh, so, <laughs> so maybe at the process of it get get smaller because like currently it's always like we have a sheaf and when we convert it to a pre-sheaf and then we um, take the function objects from it and like like um yeah at least doesn't that sheaf of abelian groups like at least converting a sheaf to abelian groups to a pre-sheaf of abelian groups should be done automatically I think like 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 uh -huh. or, or could maybe we we be might be able to make that happen. <laughs> The, but the problem is the push forward is defined on sheaves. Yeah, I don't know, but, but currently it looks very long. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. I mean, I could try and make it. So I'll tell you what, let's, <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll. By opening some modules, like, like if we just open the top dot chief module, then maybe we don't have to write top dot chief all the time. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. We could definitely open a bunch of stuff. Uh, we could, if that's what you're after, so we could open top dot sheaf. Does it still compile? It still compiles. Then you can just write push forward. Better. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Makes it much more readable. Yeah. I mean, slightly more readable. Yeah, like like it's step by step, right? Like 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 currently we are five different things we need to simplify and then it becomes <laughs> But you see, this is just awful as well. You know, I never... Uh, you, you don't actually need to write x dot to pre shift space dot pre shift. You can just write x dot pre shift. That will also work. You are right. That's good. Uh... What did we open? Top dot sheaf. And we can probably get rid of that now. Oh, no, we can't, apparently. Uh, oh, because it was top dot sheaf. <laughs> not, not chop, not top dot pre sheaf, hard luck. And if I open top dot pre sheaf as well, and then I try to do it, there'll probably be a. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> there'll probably be a top dot sheaf push forward orbit map as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This F lower star. I mean, that does look nice, doesn't it? F lower star F uh, dot map I is F dot map. If we open to topological space dot opens. Uh, yeah, open. Open topological space dot opens. How about that? Uh, uh, and now... Oh, it still displays it. That's a shame. Oh, but I oh no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It's this is good. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, things could be worse. So now now let me get stuck because after all, <laughs> I've still got plenty of time left. Uh, so when you define map, normally the first two things you should do are map id and right. So after map, what's the first thing? Like if I let's let check uh, check monoid dot map right. Uh, or monoid home dot map or something. Is that a thing? Uh, apparently not. Oh, is it, well, oh, is it sub monoid dot map? Is that a thing? Yeah, sub monoid dot map is a thing. And sub monoid dot map, what does it do? Uh, it's got, oh dear, this is cursed refactory. I bet capital F has got some more, of, I think. Yeah, there's this refactor that's made everything much less readable. So I think F is a monoid homomorphism, and uh, and we've got a sub uh, F is a monoid homomorphism from M to N, even though that's not remotely apparent. Is it apparent if I? Where is it? capital F? Yeah, this is really screwed readability. Uh, there it is. There. Uh, F F is F is got is something with a monoid hom class M M. So that that's a rather ridiculous way of saying if you're in F, then you're a monoid hom from M to N. Uh, 
Uh, so there's Comap. Uh, and where was Map? There's Map down here. Uh, oh, I've lost Map now. Where's Map? Comap and Map. Uh, there's Map. So F is a mon monotom from M to M, and then if S is a submonoid of M, you get a submonoid of M, and the... Oh, there we go. Map, map. That's something. Uh, and they don't do map. I'm quite surprised they don't do map it. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to do map it and map comp. So what's going on here is that I want to check that... Um, uh, so example... Oh, well, I, could, I could give it a name. Uh, lemma. Oh, it's not a lemma. It's a def. Def map id. There. And so what's the story here? We want to... We've got an aha. Uh -huh. So, so we've got m uh, sheaf of modules, sheaf of modules on x. Oh, it doesn't know what x is. So, have I not got variables? X ring space there, and I claim that uh, map m dot map, and now I want the identity functor. Uh, so what's that? No, it's not the... I want the identity morphism. So B1X. There. That, I claim, is equal to M. But it's probably not equal to M, right? Yeah, does that not even compile? Oh, no, does, does it compile? Oh, wow, it does compile. I'm not entirely sure if it's true, though. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that this is the correct thing to prove. I think the correct thing to prove is that they're isomorphic. Juja, do you have an opinion on this? Uh, I suspect they're not equal. Yeah, I suspect they're not equal as well. Okay, I'm going to try and prove they're isomorphic. Uh, there we go. And so... No, I'm, I'm scared of that one. I tried to do that one... I tried to do that one over the weekend and failed. So let's do map comp. <laughs> uh, so let's have X and Y and Z ringed space. Uh, and then let's have M, uh, a sheaf of modules. Uh, modules on X. And now let's have, uh, let's have F from X to Y and G from Y uh, to Z. And my claim is, uh, and my claim is that m dot map, uh, and I want the composite, which is f composed with g or g composed with f. That looks like it's worked. I claim that that's isomorphic to uh, m m dot map f. That should be there dot map g there colon equals great let me try map comp uh, oh do you, do you think these are equal by definition let's let's see if we can prove they're equal by refl uh. <laughs> oh so that's gone well that's great <laughs> uh yeah, map comp. Yeah, map comp is often like that. So there we go. So we've proved. Uh, so we've proved that's 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 not really what one should. That's that's e that's bad, right? That shouldn't be allowed. The the correct theorem should be that they're isomorphic, because you shouldn't you shouldn't push forwards should only be defined up to isomorphism. So it shouldn't even make sense to ask whether a uh, push forward is equal, but now this is going to be ISO. Isn't there some ISO ec or something? Isn't there some? I'm assuming this is some ISO. Well, I don't even. Know, I don't even know how to work this object. Uh, category theory dot ISO. Is there going to be some statement that says if you're equal, then you're ISO? I uh, guess uh, identity morphism. That's a morphism. That's what we want. I guess they're equal when there's an identity morphism from one to the other. Yeah, there is, but I, I, 
I'm uh, it is called EQ2 to ISO. EQ2 ISO, thanks. Maybe category theory dot EQ2 ISO. Category theory uh, dot EQ2 ISO. Uh, there, and now I want to feed in bad map comp. Uh, M F G. And I want to spell it correctly. Okay, that's compiling fine. Okay, wonderful. <coughs> Uh, so now let's see if we can do the same with map. Oh, we tried map it though, and it didn't work, right? Oh, how do you uncomment? I can never remember this. Is it sh control shit? There we go. Let's try bad map it. Uh, let's get rid of this nonsense. Uh, and let's prove that they're equal. And ruffle, yeah, ruffle doesn't work, which is annoying. Uh, begin, end. How close are we? Congra primed. Yeah. I don't know what to do. Case is M. Uh, raffle. How many goals have I got? I've still got one goal. What else can I case on? Ext. Oh, no extensionality rule. Um... Let's make that happen. Uh, sheaves of modules, defs. So I've got an ext on homs, uh, but I've not got an. I don't put an ext here. This should not. This is evil. Uh, equality of sheaves should not be a thing. Okay, but now I've done the evil thing. Oh no, now it's going to recompile everything. Uh, oh, everything's broken. Oh, why is it broken? Oh, okay, just run out of memory. Let's try again. Hopefully that didn't actually break everything. Great, but it took too long, so let me compile it over here. Uh, I'm just, I'm just, I changed def, so now I'm recompiling it to a, uh, there we go. Right, have we finished? We finished. Let's get back to checking visible files. Uh, and now hopefully this should be quick. Bingo. It doesn't like... Ah, so now we're going to do X. Oh, we don't want to do cases. Let's do X here, right? Oh, why are you taking forever? X. Okay, so that's worked. So intros... This doesn't look good, does it? Yeah, now I've got a heck. <laughs> uh, that's bad. Uh, oh, I've also got a broken info view. What? Ah, oh, bingo, that looks better. Uh, yeah, there's a... Ah, oh, but is this raffle? Yeah, for some reason, raffle is just not going to happen. Uh, right, to do... To do remove X from uh, sheet of modules. Okay. Uh, so we can't make it work, so, and we don't know if it's true, sorry. And so now let's do proper map it. Oh, also, bad map comp, that's, that's a lemma, right? There, this should be a lemma as well. Uh, 
can't get it to work. Okay, so now let's do map it, and the claim is that these things are isomorphic. There. And so we've got to make uh, we've got to make the isomorphism. So hom uh, I've got to give a morphism from the push forward. Oh, can we do notation? Let's do notation uh, map. Uh, let's do uh, notation. Uh, can I do? Oh, I worked this out earlier. Let me look at my cheat sheet. Let's check out this. Is that no? Is that even going to work? I'm looking at the wrong thing. Uh, where was my cool notation? Oh, here we go. Infix. Uh, infix. Uh, push forward notation there. Colon eighty. Colon equals map. And now it's complaining. So I've used that notation before. So I need to say what the name is. Uh, and I don't know. I don't understand. Name colon equals. Uh, Kevin. Kevin's push forward. I've got no idea what the purpose of that is, but it makes it work. Uh, and so now I can probably do. Uh, I think I might be able to do this now. Does that work? Yay, check it out. We've got push forward notation uh, equals f uh, lower star of m there, lower star. I'm liking this. Uh oh, I'm not liking it anymore because it's not worked. Uh, oh, it's because I'm talking nonsense. It's g lower star. Wait, it's going to be f lower star g lower star m, right? Oh, man. Is it G lower star F lower? Oh, it's G lower star F lower star because category theory, that's right. <laughs> category theory composition is the wrong way. Uh, so there we go. So we could, at least we can, uh, at least we can do the cool kids notation. Uh, right, not that that's going to help us much. Okay, so how are we going to define this map? Yay, so identity map, push forward M. Uh, so we need to make a sh what do we need to do? I don't even know what we need to make. It. Oh, we could just, I know what we need to do. We need to have a look and see how to make a morphism of sheaves. So apparently to make a morphism of sheaves, uh, we need to make a morphism of these sheaves of abelian groups. Uh, Natural transformation. Yeah, this is a morphism of sheaves, so it's a morphism of pre-sheaves. Uh, and you really feel that it should be there already, right? Oh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it shouldn't. What What is this thing? This definition of add sheaf. There, it was this thing here. Push forward f dot base object f ab sheaf. Uh, so let's do begin end. I would like to find this in the library because then there'll be a. <laughs> uh, so let's do change convert. Uh, slash b one x dot base obj. Uh, this is the push forward. It's a push forward on objects, and then let's give it m uh, dot app sheaf equals something. How's that? What? Oh, hard luck. Oh, it's one x, oh, x colon top, that's what it is. Does that work? Oh man, that should have worked. Oh, that stinks. Oh, 
Oh. Maybe you delete the dot base thing. No way. You are right. Yeah, yeah, I see the base. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one X. It was one X there, and then that should be a dot base or something. And did that not work either? Why? It's not quiver.hom.base though, right? What's actually... Where did we use base here? Which base... Yes, I know it's f from x to y. Which base is it though? Where's a base? I like the base. There's a base. It's algebraic geometry dot pre-sheaved hom dot base. It's that thing there. Uh... Will it like this? It does like that. It's just that it says that it isn't right. <laughs> what? How can that not be right? Is the push forward the correct push forward? Ah. Oh. Yes. I think that was the one that we used. Can we just unfold this? Why don't I just unfold it? What was that notation for? That's notation for map. Let's try delta, delta map. There. And now desimp only. What about that? There you go. That, that works fine. <laughs> Let's do that. Oh, it's because I put equals. It's because I put equals. Yeah, yeah. That works. But th this this works fine anyway. This will do. Uh, so now, yeah, now library search, right? <laughs> now it's in the right form. Oh, rotten luck. Do they not? Anyway. Do we not have a push forward id? Push forward. Push forward. The push forward functor. Jun Yan Zhu. Hey, were you on the call? <laughs> oh, he's probably at work. <laughs> he probably can't talk. <laughs> uh, Yan, he is He is on the call, but he's muted. Uh, I, yeah, I just, I noticed him appear. Jun Yan is, a, well... Yeah, he's got a PhD already. He's not in the course, but he's lurking. So there's the push forward. But where's the... Honestly, if you define push forward, then the next thing to do, right, is to do push forward id and push forward comp. What's going on here? Uh, push forward... This is push forward dot obj. And there's this other push forward here, that's top dot pre sheave dot push forward. Oh, how frustrating. So exact what about let's try uh I still want this to be the identity, exact uh one something or other. It's definitely not gonna be the identity. Uh Uh, there is top dot pre sheaf dot push forward dot eat. There's there's a pre sheaf one. Uh, there is a top dot pre sheaf dot push forward dot it. Oh, and it's an isomorphism. There is also an equality one called top dot pre shift dot push for dot eat eq. Oh, so that it's true by refl or whatever. They are. Uh, I think in the case of shifts modules, they are not equal by refl because maybe they have different module structures. 
But this is the sheaf uh, of like AB. Like, like we will have the ten model structures, I think. Yeah, I mean, they're the, sa they're the same in some sense, I agree, but... Uh... Like, like, like I think with our definitions, uh, I think the bad map it is actually true, but it's just maybe difficult to prove. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, let's. I can't work out whether I should be doing this evil stuff. Uh, I can do X now because I have equality. Like that. Like I think the first thing to show there would be that the identity map induced like the identity function on open subsets. But um like like, like we have the categories of open sets of X. Yeah. And the first thing would be to show that we induce like the identity functor there. And then like the push forward of M along the identity But I I'm, I'm confused about that. that's an equality of functors, which is somehow evil. And I know it's evil. I know it's evil. But okay. the thing is that the thing is that our push forward is defined by just um Pre-composing our functor with our functor on open subset category. Yes. Subset categories we already have an equality, and then, then we just. Um, so, awesome. so like I think even more it's evil. I think I think the, the lemma will actually be true. Oh, check it out! This is not. So this isn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah look, this is not. The proof is not refl. Yeah, but it uses with open dot map. I eat x. That's what I mean. We need open stuff map id ek. Oh, and uh, this this proof is not refl map id ek. This this is not refl, but it's it does look like a useful thing, doesn't it? Oh, it's just yeah. I can't believe the person that wrote this stuff is actually on the call, uh, but is also probably at work. Aha. Uh -huh. Like I would use the fact that identity map and use like identity what? functor on open subsets. Are you still? Are we still trying to prove they're equal? You still want to prove they're equal? I, I I think I think they are equal. So like like. Okay. Do I start with X? The thing about X is that these are giving me some terrifying goals. What what, what does X give you for goals? It gives you. And I, like that will be fine. Oh okay. Right, so smart then. I like, like it's, it's mostly about um, like we need to solve that for it, like every subset you that we can put in to get out the same abelian group. The thing is that, that like it will they will both be like M applied to you in bo uh, both cases. Um, it's not so refl like, yet. Like, yeah, it's, it's not refl yet. I, like you, you need the fact that, that like the identity map. Like, like we need to have somehow evaluate them at, at like an open set U and then, then see that they're equal. We want to evaluate them at an open set U. So. Yeah, like we want an equality of sheaves. <laughs> equality, which sounds kind of evil. But you, you prove this to the equality of sheaves by evaluating them at a, an open set U and showing that they take the same value on the open set U. Yeah. Um, What's top dot sheaf? Oh, I made that. Is top dot sheaf dot zero. Uh, so I can maybe if I do attribute uh, x top dot sheaf. Oh what 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 no I can't make an x lemma. Capital sheaf. Oh, is it something? It's in some namespace. Is it algebraic geometry? Unknown identifier. Uh, right. Top dot sheaf. That is a thing. I need to switch that off. As top dot sheaf is a thing. And it's this sheaf here. It's category theory dot sheaf. Oh, what? Well, that's not a category theory. It's algebraic geometry. Category theory dot sheaf. Now that has worked. And so now I'm wondering whether we can do X now. Oh, come on. Oh, is it made? Did it make progress? 
Isn't the first goal just top dot free shift dot push forward dot eq? This goal we're looking at now. Yeah. What do you think it is? Uh, top dot pre shift dot push forward dot eq. Might be. Live research timed out. Uh, exact this thing here. And then M ab sheaf. You are not correct. Ah, uh, because <laughs> this is sheaf, not pre sheaf. Uh, to pre sheaf. Is that a thing? Maybe just dot val. M dot abship dot val. Hey! We've got one of them! <laughs> Excellent. Right. That one doesn't look too tricky. That should be worth it. That's come out to be Reffle. And right, what about this one? We got six. Go on. Already. Sorry? Like, I think the most difficult part is done with this top dot push. The rest will be easy for me. That looks good, doesn't it? Uh, wait, this is... Uh, okay. Ah! Just, just Simbit or something? I don't think Simp knows any. Simp doesn't know anything about these module structures because I made them. Uh, what is this? It's a module structure. Uh, let's apply, apply heck of heck. Let's see if we can get rid of the. Oh, hard luck. Oh, apparently these have got different. Apparently, this, these have got different types. That's a... The left-hand side has got that type with a 1x in, and the right-hand side has got that type without the 1x in. The 1x up the sheet, well dot up u is equal to u. That's You're so optimistic. Is that really true in, is that really true in type theory? Like, like we're talking about like object of the category yeah, of open sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Category of open sets, you have equality. Like, do we have an equality relation in the category of open sets? Like, where we can actually talk about equality. Uh, so, so maybe we can just, just make a lemma that u is equal to like the map, uh, the free image under the identity map. Um, Right, this thing here has got type this object here. Module for that ring there, that module there. equals that thing there. <clears throat> so it thinks that the first thing is a proof. Ah, oh, it's this coercion. This is the problem. They they were equal as terms, and now they've been coerced to a type. What's going on here? Is this, oh dear. I thought, I thought that was working. Is that not working? Oh, no, no, this is fine. The but with 1x lower star m f sheet well dot of u, like we, uh, we can definitely simplify that to u, like it's equal to u. That's an object of the of open. So, like, we should something like have and then this 1x m f sheet well uh, Like, I would just, just make, make a lemma that this is actually equal to u in the, as an object of, like, the Actually, order set of open sets.
Okay, okay. This is exactly what you're not supposed to do in type. I can't believe we're being videoed. Just remember that. You want that. So. so I'd like the whole thing with you. Like you, you, you take one X lower star M, upshift, well, up U. Yeah. That whole. T this is actually equal to you. I mean, it's it's M U right M dot abshief. So what do I need to make this work? Let's have that and that. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, okay. And you want that this thing here equals M dot abshief dot val dot obj u, and the yeah. proof of that is refl. Oh, we don't have a u. Uh, I don't think don't think for proof that is refl, but uh, I I think it's true. And uh, where is U? Where's a U? There's a U. Let's take U to have this type there. Uh, there. Oh, but it's it's not worth it. You could like use the fact like, like like maybe we can just unfold this uh, one x lower star of m like the definition of this thing. Can can you just unfold like with the definition of a push forward? Aha. So let's unfold a uh, map there and now desimp only. Uh, and now let's delta push forward. Now let's desimp only. I think we can again use the top dot pre shift dot push forward dot eat eq. Great. Level. This evil okay. lemma. Uh, but, but we're getting closer. Like, like I think it will actually work out. I mean, can you just rewrite this lemma? Let's see if we can rewrite it. Oh, what? Oh, did you? Did I? Yeah, that's the wrong push forward. Oh, we've got index dot base. This must be. Oh, well, I want to simp that. Yeah, oh. now, now we're now we're getting somewhere. Now we have this topological space dot open dot map of one x. And this is just the identity map on the open set. Like like now 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 we're getting somewhere. Um, like now now we need to take the fact that like topological space dot opens of identity that this is like. The identity thing. Like well, this is the main fact we need. That like identity function uses identity function on the category of open. So you want topological space opens map this functor here, you want that to be the identity, identity func functor. Right, that would be cool. Uh topological space dot open stop map. Uh There is one called topological space dot opens dot map it, which proves that they are isomorphic as functors, but not equal to. Uh, they're, they're not equal, but, but like like the, uh, the open subsets of X are like like uh, partially ordered sets, like three. But that should not be difficult to get an equality. So this is now probably X top. Like, like if we only have an isomorphism there, then 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 my proof that works. Like, like that's the main thing I would assume that we have like a partial order set of open subsets where you have a reasonable. Oh no! I can <laughs> I don't know how to type the identity natural transformation. <laughs> oh no! It's it's really rare. It's a it's a sort of bold face one. How do I type a bold face one? Uh, but like, like the thing is, we have a reasonable notion of equality of open subsets. Of, of a, we should really have a notion of equality. So, um, oh, this is disaster! Natural transformation. Uh, getting started with the natural transformations. Where's the identity? Oh, what? Oh, I wrote this tutorial. No, surely I said. Uh, uh, why, why do we need identity natural transformation? Don't, isn't that we what we... To say that, 
we want to say it in just for identity. Sorry, the, we need the identity function. Sorry, I'm talking nonsense. Yeah, we want the identity function. Don't we want that? Is that not what we want? Yeah. And like, I think it's true because for open subsets of a topological space, you do have a reasonable notion of equality. Like, you can't just say, oh, we have open subsets which are isomorphic. No, you, you can actually say they're equal. So that's like not a problem. How do you check the two um, functors are equal? <laughs> yeah, we, we have this topological space dot open dot map id equals lemma, which which yeah, says exactly this eviler thing. So what's it called? What topological space dot open dot map uh, underscore id underscore equal. Uh, everything's timed out. Hang on. That's worked. Okay, wonderful. And okay, now we can we wipe this here? Emma? After the simp, after the simp, after the simp, we can rewrite the easy thing. So we should make it a simp level. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now let's see what simp does. Oh, it didn't rewrite it. Why is it rewrite evil a thing? Do I get motive is not type correct or something? Oh, it can't find it. Oh, is it the what wrong e one? Sorry? What about e rewrite? Just use e rewrite. But is it is that a different kind of am I being crazy? Are they different ones? <laughs> e rewrite worked. What does e rewrite do? Hey! <laughs> Evil I think e rewrite is... just uh, unfolds some semi reducible things. So, uh -huh. or, yeah. Uh, so now we rewrite work. evil thing. Oh, curses. Simp only evil thing. Oh, simp only needs this, I think. Oh, and we were doing so well. Uh, well, well but I think we can do it now. So if we have this, then, then, then it will go through again. This, this, this lecture is supposed to have stopped, but go on then. Okay, what are we going to do? Uh, well, well, just unfold the definitions and it's equal at the end. <laughs> Unfold the definitions. A... Delta uh, map dot module structure. Oh no, is it? Uh, it's not map dot module structure. It's I think it's uh, sheaf of modules. Uh, so so like like these two things are equal, and the only thing that stands in the way of recognizing that is that we can't unfold the definitions automatically. If we just unfold the definitions, then it's roughly in the end. But I can't unfold the definitions. These are okay. these are two module structures, but okay, okay. Um, but this is a module. Like... Evil thing. There's that thing there. It's the type you see. Uh, um, I don't know if I'm gonna. Okay, okay, so, so so far we have shown that the two sheaves of modules are equal when evaluated at an open subset. Now we should have some kind of lemma which says that if we have two sheaves equal values when evaluated at an open subset, then the two sheaves are equal provided they have the same restriction. <laughs> like two, two this goal <laughs> this goal is simply I've got to prove the two modules I'm <laughs> I think we just don't have the correct axed lemma if we, if we want to work with equality of sheaves of modules. I think you might be right. I think I'm going to yeah, stop. Because I've been going, I mean, I felt bad that I sort of started 10 minutes late, but now I'm 10 minutes over. Uh, so anyway. Yeah, but, but I think it goes through if we now just make an evil X lemma for sheaves of modules. I think you but might like be right. Of... Pater, okay. I'm gonna, I'll push, right? Do you know where the repo is? 
I, I don't know. I'll um, I'll dump it in the chat in the Discord. Uh, where is the chat? Oh, here we are. Oh, what happened to Teams? <laughs> hi, hi, Dave. Hi, David. Um, what happened to Teams was that I couldn't screen share on Teams uh, for reasons as yet unknown. Uh, so let me let me find the repo. And I tell you what, let me stop recording. So yeah, thanks thanks very much for listening to this nonsense. Let me stop recording. Uh, let's do that like that.